What's up guys, welcome to another YouTube video, and in this run, I actually forgot to show the Neon bonus because I didn't click record in time, so we were offered some stuff, I don't know, some pick a card, we ended up picking lose max HP for transform two cards, Some again, I've been doing this, I like it a lot, and we end up getting loop and recursion, we transformed one strike, one defense, just in case you guys get jumped in there, because you will, got a loop and a recursion, floor zero, strike defend. And aside from that, we made one mistake in this run on the book stabbing, so forgive me for that. But in general, it was a really fun run, and aggregate on CC top popped off. So enjoy, drop a like if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I love this, so I'm, I'm starting off here. And maybe maybe we can go to the other one that has more upgrades. This is good odds. Nice. Um, I took some damage. Let's, let's expect it, I suppose. Come here, buddy. Come here, big boy. Oh, come here, big boy. Alrighty. So, wait, who's the boss? I, I've been a really huge fan of aggregate. It feels inappropriate to take aggregate this early. Let's just be honest. Rebound is like just the damage approach. We're going against slime boss. Slime boss is not bad. I'm, a, I'm addicted to the idea of what aggregate could be in, in, in the grand scheme of things. I'm talking um, big deck, a lot of card draw, compile driver skins, all that stuff. But if we're being realistic, I also, okay, I've also kind of realized that the, when you get offered uncommons, uncommons are like the foundation of each class. So obviously these uncommons are pretty decent. Like this is a draw engine that is insane that definitely doesn't have any relevance now so we don't care about seeing that now it's just unfortunate byproduct of the games that you're going to find these cards that are great early sorry great late but you're not going to take them early of course and this doesn't actually do anything right now it just gives me energy but to do what so uh, it is rebound here to get the damage but um it's just important to realize that there's this part of me that wants to go crazy So recursion of floor zero, I don't even know how to like uh, parse that. I suppose. So if we have recursion of floor zero, hey, thank you, Marina. I really appreciate the man. Really kind words. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It doesn't help that like if you're if you're your own worst critic, it, sometimes it's hard to. It, you know, there's days where I'm like, oh man, this is a great video. I want to get this out there. There's other days where I'm just like, I don't want to bother and look at it, you know. It, it's a very <laughs> up and down situation. Okay. So, a static discharge I'm, I'm a fan of. Now, this doesn't really play that well in a slime bus fight. And I wonder how well this actually plays in, like, the elite fights or even in hallway fights. Like, this is a card that has potential. But let's really analyze how good it is. Like, it's much better than Hexagosha Guardian. For Slime Boss, it doesn't play that well. For Gremlin Knob, it's okay. For Triple Century, is probably okay. What's up, Serotonin Dragon? So, this card, this card might be simply a boss related decision. Like, if it's Hexagosha, if it's Guardian, we're happy to take this. I wonder if we are taking Slime Boss, if this is something that we just don't want to take. Because you spend one energy, you have to get hit for this to be relevant. And that's only three damage if it's not full orbs. And it's three damage on the following turn. It's really, when you put it into terms of early game potential, it really doesn't do much at all. But of course it has a lot of potential once you upgrade it. And then you get other orbs in the mix, like Frost. So now it becomes a block engine sometimes because it's evoking frost orbs in the middle of the f turn. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys that. So that, that brings me to my my point here is that what do I take? <laughs> what do I take? Because overclock is a gr another great card, which is card draw, and it does add burns. But most of the time in these short fights, the burn is not entirely relevant. 
So Overclock is obviously a good card. I've grown to like it more. Steamberry is obviously a good card as well. It's it helps our block profile for our low energy deck at the moment. Steam Barrier I can see being totally appropriate. It might even be Steam Barrier. It might even be Steam Barrier, but obviously I really enjoy this card. And I think Static Discharge has a lot of potential. Uh, it might be even a decent upgrade target. I, I will take it, but I'm um, reluctantly. Yeah, it is pointless for the boss. It's also like okay right now for hallway fights. It's really not going to do that much. Overclock is probably going to do more for the... So these cards are going to do more for sure. And I wonder... How proactive I should be in Act 1 and Act 2. Because like, we're really deep diving here, right? We're really going to deep dive. This is what it's all about. The deep diving comes down to these de these decisions. How much are we speculating? Or do we really want to just be proactive in Act 1 and Act 2? Or just mainly just Act 1 right now? So I think this is obviously the best choice for Act 1. This probably is decent enough for Act 1. and also has some really nice future value. So Does Static ever play out of the split? Yeah, it, it does. It does. It can play after the split in this line boss. It can for sure. Especially if I upgrade it. I will probably take some pot shots here and there. And unfortunately, Static Discharge may even split them prematurely. I mean, it's kind of awkward. Because you can't control where the lightning gets evoked. And you may want to control to your best ability what gets split and what, what damage goes where. So it's sort of a risky game because Static Discharge could be splitting the Green Slam at max split health. Now you're stuck with 20, 13, 30 damage next turn. Now that's just one scenario. Of course, there's also another scenario where it evokes Frost at the same time and there's Dark Orb is involved. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's so early. I, 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 oof. I'm going to take Static Discharge. I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> Don't know if it's correct. We'll upgrade it though. We'll even take it and upgrade it. And that makes it nicer to play. Sure thing. So taking one damage here is actually quite nice. The recursion early is a little bit interesting. I think upgrade is like a charge is obviously not the worst. Okay, so we got ball landing and cool headed. Now cool headed becomes better because of static discharge. This frost becomes something that could be evoked for more block in a turn. But if we're talking strictly trying to go for elite smackaroos, Bolt Lenny is the front Bolt Lenny is the front line of damage we want to see. And that makes me kind of question whether or not I should go for these this path right here. With a card like Ball Lightning with rebound and static discharge plus, I could even take a, a third elite, perhaps. So I wonder if I actually go for the sparkle. Which is a little bit crazy. A little bit nuts, huh? I want to get some events intersper uh, interspersed with everything else. That's why I like this path, because it has events. I think some Act 1 events are pretty nice. But we already saw a really good one. Yeah, so... With all that being said, uh, maybe this is just better. We get, some, we get a lot of upgrades. We get a lot of upgrades, and upgrades are quite nice. Makes it look a little bit better. I'll go for the ball landing here. I'll actually go for this path. I, I think 3 elites is doable. Yeah, overclock like transfer my clock. Yeah, over overclock is, is quite nice. There's a lot of hallway fights, but that's okay. I guess we want to see cards. That's fine. I think our deck is also decent enough for to handle hallway fights, I would say. Okay. But I wonder if we should have been ambitious and go for three leads. But I would say we're doing pretty well. Okay. I think chose a fantastic card. And not fantastic for the slam boss, but fantastic for triple century. Fantastic for... Hey, it's just good for triple century. It's also good for hallway fights. If you're asking about Gremlin Knob and, and uh, Lagavulin, well, this is just whatever. But with Static Discharge, this might get a little bit more play. It's okay. I think we make that sacrifice that this is not that good for the elites. Well, two of the elites is good for triple century. And we still take it regardless because it's actually pretty decent for hallway fights as well. It's okay. Maybe maybe it's a little bit of pattern play. Maybe I'm taking a card that is a little bit patterny there. I, I I think show gets you in the frost realm and it obviously plays pretty well in hallway fights and it also is good for super century. So that's good enough reason for me to take it. The fact that some of these cards that I have are not that good for slam boss is a little bit worrisome. Yeah, I was saying that I think defect if defect gets out of Act One, I do think the defect has some. It obviously depends on the deck, but I think defect has some crazy. 
potential in the late game, obviously. But I also came to realize there are some decks that struggle against the heart, heart exclusively. I know I played it wrong and I was a little bit tilted and stuff like that. And I played it off stream and I beat it no problem. So maybe it's just a me problem. But I have a small suspicion that the defect might struggle against the heart, depending on the deck. But I'm also crazy because there's some decks that are just completely steamrolling the heart. So we're going to keep doing this 30 game sample size. And we're going to really evaluate what, uh, what the defect struggles with here. And we're going to try to get, get to the nuances of everything. Matthew, thanks for the uh, five biddies, buddy. Uh, I like the front I like the front loader damage upgrades, personally. Do I make recursion more playable? I think recursion as a floor zero card is a little bit awkward. It makes fusion a nicer prospect. Dark orbs a nicer prospect. Um, it does manipulate loops sometimes if we get some different orbs to think about. Recursion is not the upgrade though. I think ball lightning or loop is the upgrade, but loop also has the same kind of conundrum of if you don't have focus. You know, it's just mediocre. But upgrading your powers is generally a good idea. I think the three extra damage from ball lightning is relevant, especially for things like ball lightning, uh, for Gremlin Lob and Lagavulin. Um, I, I, I'm content with upgrading the loop, even though I, I think that it's perhaps... Okay, so we take, we're losing Axe HP here, because I don't want to lose all the health. We'll upgrade the, the, the damage here. Jeremy Fish this early is totally fine. I, I personally think that we're going to add... I would say 15, 16 cards on average. So throughout the run, we're looking at 145 gold. So 135 gold. 135, it's not the best, but it's something. You gotta give it that, right? And here we can talk about like energy pot if you want to for maximizing as much damage as possible. I'm okay, I'm okay with perhaps Utilize the energy pot because we have 60% potion chance. At the same time, I feel like we don't need potions for this. And I could just save the energy pot for perhaps a harder elite fight or even the boss. So I don't know. Do I want to maximize how well this fight goes? We have chill coming up. That's going to be quite nice. I guess I have the eye fish combo, but that doesn't work, right? Because this only gives you enemies drop more gold. This doesn't affect the idol. But what this does mean is that we're going to be getting a decent amount of gold. So we have a gold pivot in this run. Not to mention, we also have a lot, a very small max HP people, which makes rest worse. So right now we kind of see what's going on is we have a deck that sometimes wants to take damage. With Static Discharge, you're probably inclined to taking self-damage. And a deck that doesn't have a lot of max HP, but a deck that is gaining gold. That's just exactly where we're standing right now. And now we, this energy pot is going to give us like 8 to so 11 damage. It's going to give us 11 damage, but also the evoking from the Static Discharge. So I would say it gives us an average of like 19 damage, maybe 19, 16 damage. I don't know. That's a decent use for Energy Pot, but at the same time, I don't think that we're in any position of urgency. If we get Bloody Idol, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Bloody Idol would be huge. So that means we want to look for some elites. We want to look for some events in Act 2, right? Maybe it was better to dual cast first. I, I, did, I did rush that a little bit. I, I don't want to go overboard with the micromanagement of everything, but at the same time. So here I can take damage and get all lighting, which is probably better. It's probably better. But then I'm also taking more damage overall, so. Hmm. We took a decent amount of damage in this fight, which makes me wonder how we're going to fare against... Oh. So perhaps we could have... Like, There's a world where we actually... Let's say we dual cast on that chill turn or do something differently. I think I could have played Static Discharge a little bit better and maybe saved 5, 5 to 7 life. I don't know. So th that was a little bit of an issue. I, I should have slowed down. I think Vice Cog is obviously a great card. I, I don't see where, where I don't take Vice Cog here. There's just so many edge cases where Vice Cog is uh, huge all the time. And there, it's worth saying that maybe Energy Bite would have saved some life in that fight as well. Mm. The thing about Defects, you can't always evaluate because of the randomness of the orbs, especially when there's three enemies. Um... 
But how do we feel about having 30 life go into a hallway fight and then potentially Gremlin or Lagavulin? I say that we do pretty well against both of them. Uh, do we want to anal? Do we want to do an upgrade in this? I think bias cog is a decent upgrade. Uh, but then you look at turns like this and you realize we take a lot of damage, and we're gonna have 22 life against the gremlin or Lagavulin, and that's a little bit scary. Thank you for the thousand bits, Elo. Appreciate it, man. I do appreciate it. Maybe I should have more than Chaku stack, so little things like that. I think Cold Snap is really good with Bias Cog and the Static Discharge stuff. We have an 80% potion chance, so that would be really sad if we uh, don't manage to get a potion out of this. Like, he's going to wake up because of the loop anyways, so now is the time. we get Frost on loop here. And we'll do some Bias Cog early stuff, surely. And we can get we can get the um the lightning on loop which is quite nice. We might even have lethal if I'm being quite honest. And we do. The shock was perfectly stacked. That was a very easy fight. Took four damage only. Sentient puzzle was amazing for card draw. Um, and now we're getting offered focus in the form of consume. Now, Consume is interesting because Consume makes my orbs do more damage. And I think Consume with Loop is not bad. Consume with Loop actually makes sense. Consume with Recursion could make some sense as well. Consume with Static Discharge could make some sense as well. Consume with Cold Snap, etc. So I actually like the Consume here. I think it makes some sense. Beyond sense, I think it's actually pretty decent. Um, obviously, we have the same amount of block when we get biased. Turn one with uh, <laughs> um, it would be nice to get the Chaku stacked a little bit more. Oh, we got a lot of potions, so maybe the energy pot that I sh so we, now we go back to use of energy pot. Remember that energy pot that I didn't use in Triple Century? Probably would have saved a handful of life. So I think here's my analysis in hindsight, but also at the time where I just perhaps just wasn't thinking properly. Is that I had 70%, 60% potion chance. I should have used the potion in our lead fight where you want to save as much life as possible. Because energy pot wasn't that great. Obviously, I'm saying this in hindsight because I have all these potions I didn't need for the this lag of Olden fight. But I had to give up potion and that doesn't feel great. But this game does feel great. Okay, so we have 18 life and a dream against slime boss. Now this is not this is not really a slime boss killer. Um Chills on ineffective against slime boss. Static discharge is ineffective in the first phase. I think consume and the lightning itself will do great work. And I think once we split, we should have a good time of the fight because of consume, static discharge, and frost rope is giving me so much value. So I do think that we will have a good time after the split. I'm scared about the split itself and whether or not. Um. Whether or not I have enough damage, which I probably, I mean, we should have enough damage, but we should have enough damage. And, uh, oh, is 18 life enough life? Even, so say we don't get hit at all from the first phase, which we can't afford to. Is 18 enough life? With bias cog in play, it should be totally fine. Did, did you, did you miss, uh, did you miss my, uh, 30 game sample size in the ironclad? We did thirty. We did thirty runs where we each like each run was taking like two hours, an hour and a half, three hours. Some some runs were taking five hours. We did that for like a a couple weeks. Yeah. That seems interesting. What's the what's the upgrade here? Do we want recursion? Recursion is a little bit better now that we have like focus. Making it free is not bad with skim and stuff. I think consume getting extra focus is not bad either. I think making things like zap free is obviously beneficial. I want these cards to be more playable, especially since I'm going to have potion of capacity, so I might want to fill up the orb stops a little bit more. Oh, no problem, Benji. How you doing, man? The curse one was still one of my favorite ones. So what was the curse one? Can you, can you elucidate? Did I put it on YouTube yet, or have I not put it on YouTube yet? What was the curse one? Was that the one where I had like six curses? 
Was that, was that the limit break curse that I got limit break curse early? Transformed it, three curses, floor one. That was a fun run. I think Recursion and uh, Zap are both decent. Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great run. I think drawing here is appropriate. And now I gotta make a decision, like... I think we just do everything here. Take your T-Peaks. Alright, we got everything in play. I hope I don't regret getting lightning off loop. Also, what, do I want to rebound any of these cards? I mean, that's a pretty decent split. Pretty decent split. I think, I think I'm fine with doing consume here, yeah? If we lose a frost orb, but our damage should be impeccable. Pretty good fight. Nah, no, no glitches at all. No glitches. I haven't done some speed runs in some time. We've been, we've been doing sample size runs. Got a track one nine, which is nice. So we have buffer and offer one reboot. Um, offer one can pull back recursion and zap if I upgrade it. Um, buffer is pretty decent. Buffer is a little bit kind of anti synergy with static charge sometimes. But not always. There's times where we drop buffer before, and this helps us save life. And there are times where we drop buffer, and we want it to hit like a stop a big hit. And static charge is more for the little hits, little ship damage. At the same time, we also have really decent block. Only after we play our focus cards, like if we play bias and stuff, and consume, we should have decent block on average. So I wonder, like, how important is buffer in a world where you're blocking pretty well? Maybe, the, maybe those two don't correlate. Whereas Offer 1 is kind of Nunchaku focused as well. Offer 1 does speak for Nunchaku a little bit. But at the same time, Offer 1 doesn't really do much for the deck either. Like it brings back Recursion. And that's pretty much it. So it, it, it could even be Reboot. I mean, Reboot is it's kind of in the middle and it's card draw. At the end of the day, it could even be Reboot, reboot here. I think buffer. Oh, so we we could do the infamous insert or consume. The infamous. Um, you know, I'm of the the belief that it's actually not that good in Act Two because consume is too cost to begin with. So then you have to not only generate orbs, but then you have to play consume, and then you know you can start seeing how it could be a bit slow, which is obvious. The alternative is Curse Key and Calming Bell. And this, this is a tough choice. This is what makes the game really hard. Like, if I go for the energy here, I think I'll do quite well. Because energy allows me to play buffer, consume, make skim better. Um, make Centennial Puzzle better, because if I take if I get hit, I'm gonna have a lot of cards to play. So obviously energy is really solid. Now, the curse key it means I'm going to have to get, in the minimum, two curses. That's not to say I won't get one more or whatever, but two curses, I suppose, is the price to pay for really decent hallway fights and elite fights. I don't know. I feel like it could be curse key here. If we take Inserter, yes, we have the consume Inserter, so for long fights, we can scale infinitely. And just never lose. Now, what's the price I pay in hallway fights? What is the price I pay in hallway fights? Well, in hallway fights, we can get by with bias cog and chill. And ball lightning's upgraded with Nichaku. He's giving me some energy sometimes. So we can get by with these cards. And then 
we can find a turbo, which is a common card. And when we find a turbo, all of a sudden, Centennial Puzzle and Skim is utilizing turbo to, to get by on the energy turns. And that's realistic enough to assume because turbo is a common card. You, you can assume that turbo is not going to be extremely hard to find, but it is a little bit hope. Hope Spire, in, in a sense, because I don't have turbo in the deck. I'm just hoping for a card to make this boss like justified. Yeah, I don't like it as much because I think energy serves us really well. Energy makes Centennial Puzzle, Skim, Buffer, and um, Consume so much better. But I'm willing to say that I have... Okay, so this, I want to go for the events because we want to find Bloody Idol, right? And then we have a decent shop, and then we can go for like three elites, which is crazy to think that we're going for three elites, but this deck is pretty strong that I'm willing to... To go this route, and as I say that, and this is like that's a perfect turn for buffer. You know, taking four damage is really not too shabby, I suppose. Taking four damage is not too shabby. For, for a snake plant fight, and if he told me I only took 4 damage, I would commend you. I think it was a bad choice, I should have just attacked, but we're fine here. We are fine here. Four damage for that fight. Pretty good. Glacier. Wow. An aggressive way to build Frost. It's expensive. But man, does it block. It might overblock. Like, most of the time, it will overblock. Glacier is an amazing card, but... Ooh, is this an Apparition deck? Apparition, we buy time to scale up Consume Inserter. But then that feels kind of weird, right? Because now we have apparitions, but we have insane block. Also, our max HP is going to be abysmal. Our max HP is going to be abysmal. Now, we do get 27 gold if we take this. So that's one consideration. But our deck is built to block pretty well. It has a buffer. It has bias cog and chill and consume. It has glacier. I mean, we have ways to block. So then taking apparition just buys us time. To set up the consume, set up the frost orbs, and then when the apparitions wear out, we probably shouldn't take any damage. How often do I take apparitions with the defect? I don't know, that's a tough question. I don't think I take it too often. One bad hand and they KO you? Yeah, I mean, if because your max is so low, if you don't draw the buffer, you don't draw, draw apparition, yeah, you can get killed pretty, pretty easily. I mean, apparitions make sense with exactly this inserter consume combo because it at least buys you consume and some orb slots. So that once you get out of the apparitions, you're left with some focus, a loop, preferably, and some frosts, which should be enough to, you know, survive the rest of the fight or even win it. But I probably can do that regardless, right? I can't, I can't believe I skipped apparition, which is, all right, so we're gonna have a lot of gold here. And I think this is exciting. I'm also curious. I'm curious. Um, oh, we, we have a lot of stuff going on here. Give me a sec. Um, I have lethal. Which is perfect for Nunchaku. Ooh, Rip and Tear. Sorry, uh, Aggregate. Aggregate is solving energy sometimes. I think that's a, a step in the right direction. Now we have a big shop. This is what I want to see. This shop is going to be everything for me. Orrery is a good way to find Turbo. Meat in the Bone is a huge way to sustain. Fossilized Helix is insane. I mean, these are insane relics. I don't have enough for Helix and Meat in the Bone. But I have enough for Orrery 
Helix or Ori Meat? And I gotta make a decision. Um, the reason why we want to find Ori is because we want to find Turbos, we want to find Skims, we like these cards. These relics are fantastic. I want one or the other, so which one do we want? Helix is, who is the boss? The Collector. Helix could be useful. It's, again, the same concept of buying time to get a consume out. If I can have a Helix that allows me to get a consume out, well, the fight significantly easier. Well, Mean the Bone works in the same ways that I can take damage and heal it up. They work in similar ways. They work in similar ways. Let's get Ori first. A lot of chills. Wow, these are crazy. We got card draw, more focus, darkness. I think darkness is great. Compile, skim. Yo, there's so many choices. Another compile. Wow, so we have compile at the bottom, which I probably want to take. We have skim versus compile, which one is upgraded. And at the moment, I only really get like two cards out of compile, whereas skim gives me three with no damage attached to it. But Compile also does Kunshaku sometimes. Here we have a couple of a conundrum because the darkness is very good. And it also goes with the fact that if I'm taking this Compile on the bottom, it makes them Compile a little bit better. Defrag is not a bad power, of course. But we have Focus with Consume, so I kind of like the darkness better. Chill number two. This could be relevant sometimes, but could be a curse other times. And then Cool Headed, I kind of like because it's more Frost, but at the same time... I like Sweeping Beam because Sweeping Beam is like one of my first AoE cards that is sort of relevant in the Collector fight. Now, Cool Head is a little bit, um, yeah, hmm. I wonder if there's more chill here. Does Consume Infinite scale ability in your darkness in the mix? That's a question. Does Consume Infinite scaling need a darkness in the mix? Well. Darkness is a great way to deal damage. Um, obviously, Lightning Orb is a great way. So we have Static Discharge, which helps me do damage, right? So our damage could be Static Discharge and Lightning Orbs. And you can say we don't need any more damage in the form of Darkness. That's probably fair. So the thing is, we have Recursion for Dark. Dark also helps Compile Driver for Draw. Which right now, Draw is not that good because we don't have energy. But that's something we're looking to solve. We didn't find any Turbos, by the way. But the main goal here was to find Turbo. We didn't find it. Um, yeah, I guess dark is a little bit less desirable. But it also could be a way to handle AoE. Because if you have a big dark orb dual cast, it could be a way to target multiple enemies. I'm going to do this. What do you think about two chills? I have a lot of cards, but not a lot of energy. So this is a little bit weird. I, I'm building a deck that can... can can do a lot, but it needs like turbo. It, it, maybe I, did, I added too much card draw. Who is it? Yeah, it, it can do a lot in terms of card draw department, but it needs the turbos. It needs some of the energy, so. I don't know, I kind of went a little overboard, maybe a little bit with the card drop, but I do like another chill. I do like another chill, and I don't know if this is inappropriate or not, but I do like chill, because we do have a lot of card drop of Centennial Puzzle. So now we have a decision to do, oh wait, the shop, we're not done with the shop. I almost left. So Helix versus Me and the Bone. I think because we have so much card draw and we added all these cards, I think the Helix probably serves me a little bit better. Obviously Me and the Bone is insane as well though. Because we have Static Discharge, which kind of means there are going to be times where we can deliberately use our face to do damage with Static Discharge or deliberately gain block with Static Discharge manipulation. And we have Me and the Bone to fall back on. So what, what, what functions more? What essentially blocks more? Helix and Puzzle are awkward? Yeah, it is a little bit awkward to have Helix and Puzzle. It's true. Because if you have Centurion Puzzle, you kind of want to utilize that to find and have good turns. And Helix blocks that, so does Buffer. But you could utilize the Helix for turn 1 or turn 2, and then the Puzzle for turn 3 or turn 4. Or sometimes Helix turn 1, Puzzle turn 2. I mean, uh, there's, 
yes, it's kind of awkward, but there's also times where it totally makes sense. You think meat is better? Is meat better with a class that already has buffer in its, in its disposal? Perhaps. Does defend become worse now? Now we have two chills, we have a glacier, we have a cold snap, we have a lot of focus. Is defense simply worse? I mean, I still want to remove a strike, but... I mean, I probably ideally would like to get rid of defense and, and strikes altogether. Pandora's box is great in this class. I still think having a defend is probably more valuable than having a strike. With that being said, that means I really do want to remove a card. So I can I can talk about another loop. Another loop could get ludicrous, but do I have the energy to do so? I think I want to buy an energy putt and fight this elite now. What about three elites? We could do three elites after this campfire. That's, that's totally fine. I think I agree. We want to. So a party wants to upgrade shell so that I can have that right away against the multi enemy fights like the Grim Leader and like the Slavers. So I think one show upgrade is actually quite decent. Uh, part of me also really wants to upgrade aggregate because I, I think maximizing the energy is going to be huge for me. Absolutely massive. Because we have Centennial Puzzle, because we have the, the two skims, because we have the Compile Driver. So these are both great upgrades. I think Chill might be a little bit functionally better. But I think getting aggregate energy right away will do huge dividends for this deck because of the Glacier, the Buffer, the Consume, the Card Draw. So I'll go for aggregate, but I, I, I do want to get show upgraded in probably next campfire. This could be an in interesting energy pot turn just because we have consume, we want to utilize it. Right? And we want to do recursion perhaps. I could also deliberately take damage here. I don't know how like good that is to literally take damage here. Might be decent. Cause we want like taking damage here means we want to find chill. We want to find the bias. We want to find the aggregate. Um, let's say I don't take the damage here and I only draw five cards next turn. Well, there's a decent chance that I get smacked if I get attacked next turn. And since I didn't play chill, um, yeah, there's a decent chance we can get, lose a lot of life next turn. I think it might be worth to just do since you're impulsive now. And it activates me in the bone. So we get aggregate in this turn, which is huge. Boom. Immediately paying off. And I think playing buys now is completely appropriate. And I love this for me. Let me use the bathroom real quick. Alright. So it goes without saying we can play play buys. Now, whether or not we want to play Geisher, or do we want to play Cold Snap Compile first? That's that's the question I hand here. And, um, yeah, that's the question I hand. So we have 18 block plus 7, right? So 25 for Glacier. 25 for Glacier here. Kingside Castle, baby. Kingside Castle. You want to test me? Let's play a game where I'm blindfolded. Who wants to play a game with me? A chess with me? I'm blindfolded. I'll make the moves in my head while I play this elite fight. Let's, let's go with a little challenge. Anybody want to do a chess chess game right now? Completely blindfolded. Let's try it out. The problem with this is that. I don't know if I want to get rid of my, my Dark Orb, because that's decent damage. I want to like try to recursion. We can, we can look for recursion, right? Yeah. You're an H4? Okay. E5. I drew both chills there, which is a little bit awkward, but it's okay to still have them in the deck, I would suppose. Oh, interesting. Like, we have so much block. It's kind of ridiculous how much block we have. Oh, 
we're, we're over overwhelming amount of block here, which is not that good. Considering that I want to be using consume. Like I want to be using consume. Like as, I want to see. I want to use consume as every time I see it. I'm, I'm over blocking like way too much. Uh, I don't like that. So darkness, this is where darkness comes in handy because darkness helps me get the damage necessary to kill these dudes. Or the darkness gives me the damage to kill the gremlin leader so I can just go back into it. Because right now I'm... It's overwhelming amount of block. Gremlin leader is actually pretty rough for me because I don't have a great AoE and... I might have been... I might be over blocking here. Maybe bias a little too early. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I was supposed to save darkness. That's why that move was a little bit weird because I didn't get this... I didn't save darkness. Remember, I could always start taking damage for, for aesthetic discharge. That's always a thing I could do. This game is weird because if I draw into aggregate, it's pretty good. But I also get into chill, which is I don't know. Chill is still a decent block here. I guess I could do the math. If I draw into chill, I I do um. 16 block so we're at 28 28 plus 15 it's 43 so minus 14 is 39 43 sorry I did the math wrong 29 29 16 so it's gonna be 13 damage left over I, I my buffer blocks three only my buffer only blocks three. If I just do defend, I have 15 plus 12, so it's 27, 27 plus five. Mm. 32, 32 minus 14, 18. My buffer blocks more there. And if I do, is darkness even better? Darkness is, uh, Darkness is going to be 8 plus so 18, 18 plus that is 30, so 14, 16. The darkness is even better. Um, I can... This is weird because I can do... Um, Uh, I can do sweeping beam first, and then try to direct all the damage directly to him. Or I could try. So if I do chill, I could do recursion. I could do 15 damage to the gremlin leader, which is not bad. It's weird. It is weird here. I could do chill first, or I could just do sweeping beam, and focus completely on lightning here. I think I'll do sweeping beam first. I don't like how much damage I took. Oh my god, I'm off at hand. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So Muffet Hand is really big. This this combo in general is gonna get out of control quickly. This is gonna be out of control. Double energy is pretty decent sometimes, right? Because of first off, double energy could be useful when I use Centennial Puzzle and sometimes the month at hand hits double energy. Double energy is probably decent. In so the only problem is my turn ones, right? Now the problems are turn one. My turn one, if I draw like month at hand, so if I draw double energy, aggregate all these cards on turn one, that's where it becomes a problem. So my turn ones are the scariest. When we found it, that's exactly what we wanted. Now we have sustain for picking up cards, sustain for getting gold, and sustain from, oh my God, we have sustain everywhere. So that makes me wonder if I should skip a campfire here. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. We have... Whoa! This is something. My turn ones are really awkward. Do I just die to the slavers or am I good? If I upgrade show, I'm probably okay against the slavers, right? Upgraded show probably good enough against the slavers or is that not good enough? We take damage and then turn two we have... Uh, it's a puzzle, move at hand stuff. 
I think we upgrade sure we're good enough against the slavers. But hallway fights become better because hallway fights are giving us a lot of sustain. Alright, so this guy is a little bit annoying, but not the worst either. We gotta make a choice between consume, recursion, and buffer. I think we just take the damage. I think we, I think we just do consume, chill, recursion. And we can block as much as possible, so we're gonna get wounds regardless. Now, I wonder if we want a color spot for this. What can color spot be? I don't know. I don't really see a reason for color spot, but I do see a reason for getting this card draw right now. Got aggregate, which is huge. Doesn't do. Uh, this might be a decent time to do color spot because I just don't have. Well, double energy doesn't do enough. I would like to get a card draw from from this color spot. There's just a lot of non good cards here. Which means all my good cards coming up are going to be really nice. Um, I think we should start getting darkness on loop as well though. So let's try to make that happen. Also, once we get static discharge, this fight's over. I'm a little bit overthinking here. So I got to try to get into the zen state where overthinking is not... Because if I just focus on what is actually happening with this deck... Static discharge wins this fight. Bias cog static wins this fight. So this fight is actually really free for us. Which means we should leave for a nice heal and be able to do the sparkle. Okay. Demetri doesn't make that much sense right now. But I do like the idea of getting Dark on loop. And taking a little bit of damage, I mean, that's just the price I have to pay. I don't like how much damage I'm taking here. That's a little annoying. So part of me wants to see what I draw into. So Glacier is a great thing. The only problem with Glacier here is that it ruins my Dark Orb. But we already said that Static Discharge wins this fight, right? That means I won't be able to play Static Discharge. So what can Color Spot give me in terms of energy? Because it's clear we want to play Static Discharge, so it just wins the fight. And we can make this risk because it does have Mummified Hand, so we can take that risk. What can this give me in terms of energy, though? It can give me a power like Panache. Now, now playing Bias here would be great. Like, I would love to be able to play Bias here. I and mean, we can take this damage, though. Even, even, even so, we can still take this damage here, I would say. I would say even so, we can take this damage. And Lightning Manus would have been nice, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can draw to... I mean, it is cutting close, though. It is cutting it close. Because I need to be able to take... I think we lose here, actually. Oh, we actually lose here. Fuck. Damn, 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 damn. Only because of the way... Damn, my, my draws are pretty bad there. Draws are pretty bad there. Uh, could I have mapped it out a little bit differently? I think we just lose here, though, unfortunately. If I took so that if I didn't do so, what if I, what if I did it differently? What if I um, how, how can I play it differently? If 
I didn't have frost on loop, I would need more life, right? The problem is I, I didn't... The problem is I took 20 damage last turn. So maybe it was Glacier. Maybe I was supposed to play Glacier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would need to take a second hit. Yeah, so maybe it's Glacier. Let's, let's take a look. I'm just curious. I don't know, I got a little too fancy with like trying to play card draw. Maybe it's just Glacier there, so I don't take that much damage. Let's, let's take a look here. It's unfortunate. Let's take a look here. I think that energy to get out of the deck is also something I could have done in hindsight as well. So here we say, oh, so here we decided to, oh, but Frost wasn't on loop last time. That's different. That's different. It's a little bit different. I don't know. This deck shouldn't have died. I don't. Th I definitely have made an error with like skim shenanigans. Like this is definitely a pilot error. Twenty-three, which means because of twenty-three, I take. Got the twenty three. I take five and then seven. This is a little bit different. Now, this is for sure a pilot error. so much I'm not sure uh, so frost on loop was the one issue and then the other issue was like I drew with skim instead of just like playing static discharge first because I forgot about Muffet hand and we already knew static discharge was like wants to be played so if that's the case you just play static discharge and see what what happens there there's a lot of things that fundamentally I did wrong uh, do I like weaken probably probably don't mind weaken We can we can, can contribute to a really bad turn one again as well. I think I fell into that trap of like talking the spire, not playing the spire, right? So if I talk the spire too much, I, I lose the ability to actually play the spire. Funny enough. I don't know, I feel like weaken is okay, but often I mean, the fact that it heals is something to consider. I think consume is a pretty decent power. I mean, thing to play. I think buffer is interesting as well. Yeah, we have uh, we've science this one for sure. This doesn't count as a win, but for for my sake, I, I like the way this deck was looking. And I'm curious. To keep the truck on. Take one damage, which is perfect. One damage is perfect.
Take care of uh, Elo. Let's get dark on loop. Separate loading. Do good, man. I think Amplify is pretty decent in this deck. Oh, I forgot about Unceasing Top. I should keep that in mind. I should keep that in mind. Seems I was pretty decent because I do have surplus of energy at times. So, so stop is pretty decent. He thinks is amazing for card draw and a werewolf muff at hand. Capacitors off. Like, this is kind of incredible. His upgraded powers are kind of nuts. Taking bias this early is that worth it? Plain bias is really worth it. We have consume to top us off, right? Like consume tops off the deck. We also didn't line up shooter. Oh, we did. It's fine. I guess we could have looked for we should have drawn first and looked for aggregate, right? Yeah, I should have drew first, look for aggregate for powers. If I find powers, the powers allow me to play more cards. Especially with Amplify. I should have drawn because of Amplify and deck. That was my bad. I saw consume and I wanted to play it, but you should draw first because you should look for powers to play with Amplify and that can make consume playable. So that was a mistake. Now if it doesn't get played, of course. But we're still okay in damage here. Take only when? when? Um, we done that. I've done that for you already. Reloading. I've done that for you. Reloading. You don't remember? I dug my heart out for you. Should probably keep uh, lightning better for damage because we have two buffers, so it's fine. I'll try to use some. Uh It's a 
decent dual cast here, I would say. If I find it. I think it's a decent compile driver as well. Found aggregate or something. Found aggregate. It's decent. You can do another consume as well. That's just to kind of keep the focus up, but that's not necessary entirely. Doesn't let you. You try the VPN. Damn. That's unfortunate. I'm trying to get closer to the uh, dark orbs here. Maybe a re rebound was appropriate. I can imagine rebound was appropriate there. I'm confident that we have. I'm not really utilizing double energy as much as I should. Electro is interesting because it solves this AoE thing. I think it's a decent power for starting fights. I think Shulker is obviously really bad. and We might end up with no energy wreck at all. Like, it's between Empty Cage and Tiny House. I think removal is pretty good because removing, like, strikes so that I don't have as many bad draws is not bad. There are still some bad draws, though, where I don't do much of anything, like double chill and all these defends. I think removing the strikes here feels pretty decent. If I were to do Tiny House, it gives me max HP, which I like. It gives me gold, which I like. It gives me a potion, which I like. It gives me a card choice, which I like. And I also like the upgrade. So I think Tiny House is not bad either. Because this deck doesn't mind upgrades either. Uh, like upgrading the double energy, making it more playable would be great. Darkness would be great. Buffer upgrade would be great. Um, a couple upgrades we don't care about, but there are a couple upgrades we do care about. Versus just simply making the deck smaller. And making the deck smaller makes aggregate a little bit worse, but at the same time also makes me more consistent. It should be mentioned that this also does give me max HP, which is something to think about. It does give me an upgrade, and it does give me gold, which not irrelevant. That cage for consistency. We have turns where we don't do much of anything, right? Sure, but at the same time, I could just get an upgrade... I also get a potion and max HP. Like max HP is pretty good. Two removals in the shop right now. Removal will cost a hundred. It costs a hundred to remove. So two of them will be two twenty five. Two twenty two twenty five worth worth of removal. But how much is five max HP worth? And how much is a potion worth? And how much is an upgrade worth? Right? You got to compare the two. So this gives me fifty gold. Plus how much is the max HP worth? With this much sustain, because I have so much sustain, max HP is pretty good. Because I have more of a pull to work with. With me and the bone and bloody idol, having more max HP is pretty decent effective health. But how much effective health do I gain by removing strikes, you know? I mean, it can go endless. Um, how much do we think max HP is worth? A fruit juice is how much? 100 something in the shop. I think this deck is still handle Wakeman anyways though. Well it's not just 50, 50 gold, it's also like random upgrade plus max HP. How many elites can this deck do though? I think this deck can do a decent amount of elites. What's the amount of elites? What's the max amount of elites in this, this run, this act? Two max? Uh, incredible. So here, like, I want to play Amplify. So this double energy really needs an upgrade because if it has an upgrade, uh, it, double energy allows me to do so much. Oh, uh, I can play my whole hand with double energy. I need to upgrade double energy because it allows me to play my whole hand. And at the moment, double energy is not getting any play.
I go, I'll go for you guys plus that. I don't mind. We have wing boots. Wait. Uh, I didn't think about wing boots. Wing boots means I can do... I can't even do more elites because all the elites are in the same fat. I can't even wing boots for more elites. <laughs> I can't even use wing boots for more elites. It's a really sad wing boots. Like wing boots for events. I can also wing boots for campfires, I suppose. I can't even wing boots for campfires either. <laughs> I actually like cards as well. This is interesting because I do have uh, I have interesting top, so this could be all right. About the events is that I'm not too sure about what events I actually care about. Timmy Gloomers is. I don't think we need any of this stuff. Like Bullseye, I, don't, I think our deck's pretty much decent. At least I could get better though. So Panacea is decent. Do we like Panache for the bomb? Probably not. Do we like Panache though? Probably not. Not the, not the greatest rewards. Did we get a card? Duplicating Bias is pretty decent, isn't it? So if we duplicate Bias, um, well, is Bias, bias worth up duplicating or is it better to like, duplicate Panacea so we can get the artifact for Bias more often? Double Bias is pretty good though. And if I upgrade Panacea, then I have potentially have two bat two. Two. Oh, well, I'm going to use Wakeman. So Panache is not good for Wakeman. One. I don't need Panache because I have Electrodynamics. So Panache doesn't do anything for me. It's a power that zero cost, like Mumford Hand, sure, but whatever. Um, double bias is decent, I think, because I mean it makes the Panacea upgrade at least relevant. But also, I mean, what's better? What's the better upgrade? Loop. I can take another loop. I could take another Heat Sink, so I have more card draw. I could take another Glacier, so I always have more Frost. Like, am I getting low on Frost? Do I need a second Glacier? How's our Frost game going? We don't have Hologram, so this Glacier is all we have in terms of Frost. Like, I might just duplicate the Glacier here. Because I think the deck does everything pretty well. The only thing it suffers is that sometimes it might not have Block because it just won't have Glacier. Because the problem is I'm doing Consume. The consume means that the um, like I actually don't have as many orb as I, I actually want, so I have to make a decision between if I have frost or not. So I can see a double glacier being okay, but at the same time, another bias is obviously pretty decent as well. The only thing, I don't think the only way we die is if like we don't have frost up. I'll do another glacier. That's pretty nice. I love membership card. Love it a lot. Is turbo is the one turbo still decent for us? I still think one turbo is probably pretty decent. A singular turbo. But now we're getting all the energy off of my head hands. I still think a single turbo is probably okay. Especially with the With the uh, anti top shenanigans. Nice. Nice. 
I wish I would get a little bit more, uh... I think putting dark on loop is quite nice. I wish I would get a little bit more... I, mean, I don't even take damage here. Oh, bottle lightning. What do I want to bottle? Bottle lightning on Panacea? Now, bottle lightning on Panacea means if I hit the 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 bias cog, we're good. Now, the problem is with against the heart. That means I would stop the vulnerable, but it also might also stop the frail. So bottle lightning would be really good for seek, of course. Do we want a defrag or is that even necessary? I mean, yeah, powers are pretty decent. Um, we can bottle amplify as well. Or we can even bottle aggregate. I think bottling aggregate is probably better just because it gives us the option to not have to invest the... Uh... Oh my god. Oh my god. If I just do double bias now, we probably just win, right? There's no... There's no... And this guy has 500 life, so let's... Before I invest myself in that, right? Before we dive right into that. Oh, hi. Alright, well, this should be good. That's kind of what I was saying about the aggregate. Aggregate can lead to more, I feel like. Kind of like having lightning on loop instead. But I guess getting dark disclosure loop is not bad either. Putting the dark on loop is quite nice here. We kind of just chill for a little bit. Just chill. Gonna be lethal soon. Recursion makes it a a a, a beast. Re pillow is not very good, but. Another recursion. Recursion is interesting because since we have one season top, recursion probably is okay because we can play it on. I think another recursion makes sense when we have a. Uh, oh, backup prep is so good. It's actually have to get rid of it. Backup prep is amazing. Backup prep is really good. Quite sad. No, this was supposed to be an event. This was supposed to be an event. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Panacea upgrade immediately beneficial. Oh my god. Oh my god. Another glacier. I I, I used I used to be on glacier already. Yeah, I don't need any more cards here. I already I mean more cards means I already get better turn one I suppose. But we already used to on the glacier already, so I think uh, two glaciers is probably just fine. I don't want a second one necessarily. I mean a third one. 
aggregate turn one is actually doing some great work for us. Like bottle lightning aggregate is, I'm, I'm really enjoy enjoying it with unceasing top. Unceasing top is, it's pretty epic actually. Let's recall. Let's go for more events. I still didn't find mind blue. I mean, I went for as many events as I could with that word in elites, and, and here we are. So that Sender's Bane is the number one enemy to NCC top. It always has been, always will be. That's terrible, General. I don't need any more of this stuff. Another event, Mind Bloom. Each event has been a fight. What is that? <laughs> Each event has been a fight. I didn't see any of the events we want to see. That's unfortunate. Look at all that energy turn one not utilized. Also, not enough of leads either. Quite sad. Quite sad. All the energy wasted. I could potentially get to, um, Aggregate again. Let's let's go for aggregate, potentially. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I've gotten this guy to zero HP many times. Yes, sir. I, I, I want to get blue candle from the shop. That would be nice. He's sick. I want to get a strike so I can get on top. Turbo could have got another strike, technically. Power pot's not bad, right? Stack is also pretty decent. Stack does a lot of block, but we're good on block. And power pot for the heart, is that better? Than cultist pot? I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter here, does it? Wow, look at this turn one. Whoa. Blue candle, please. No ice cream, no blue candle. Amplify bias though. All right, so we can do amplify static. Is that necessary or nah? The game's over, right? I guess I could play heat sinks and loop and electro. I can play everything, I suppose.
could consume. Let's try to find aggregate. I get with a defrag as well. There's really no need, technically. But it's fun. But it's fun. I played all my powers. <laughs> I played all of them without a care in the world. Will I regret it? Potentially. I could do Glacier again so I have more Frost, or I could do, um... Consume. Dark on loop. Nice. I already frost on loop. Let's find, uh, let's get to the to Star Corp. Just hoping for some some nice no uh, no curses. Decent turn one. Can't complain. Should I look for uh, aggregate? <laughs> Without fail, brother. Without fail. It is without fail that I find aggregate every time. Impeccable. Perfect in Tucker, like perfect in Sugar. Nice. I would like Blue Candle the most. Out of all the things I want to see, it's Blue Candle. As crazy as that sounds, all I want to see is Blue Candle.
I guess Tori's not bad. Tori's a close second. Set out to search Tori, game's over. Set out to search Tori, game's over. Now let's see if Blue Candle would have been great. Oh, but Heat Sink saves us. Heat Sink saves us. I should have taken damage deliberately here. That's my bad. I should have taken damage here. Unfortunately, I drew to bias. Yeah, I should take damage here, literally. Okay, we can heal up here pretty easily after this. No problem whatsoever. Um, I could add this card here just because if I add a card, it gives me some healing. I do blue mods, yes I do. Buffer upgrade's not that good because it doesn't work for multi-hit and I don't care about upgrading buffer for the big hits either. Um, creative AI is interesting. Creative AI gives me heat sinks every single turn. Do we like creative AI? Sure. But maybe double energy is better. We have two chills turn one, which is interesting. I'm curious to see what happens here. So I want to find... We want to find... Uh, we want to find... Panacea, right? Correct or, or wrong? Nice. And we want to do double bias if, if possible. Or am I wrong? I can let this, you know, get no vulnerable here, which is probably fine. But maybe I can just also just do dexterity instead. I don't know. Like, does vulnerable bother us when we have this much block? And does vulnerable bother us? I could just do dexterity instead, but I don't really have dexterity cards. I don't know. I don't really have dexterity cards. I would like to just keep a second, you know, artifact for double bias, but it's whatever. We have Tori, so we're not taking any damage. 
Uh, we didn't get Amplify inside of Gear Structure. Amplify is only going to be used for creative value stuff, which is fine. I will just prevent the vulnerable or not. We got more stack discharge, which is pretty good because we can do amplify stuff, right? Kind of want to take damage there. Like, so that was a lot of damage I, I could, could have gotten, but it's fine. There's more where that came from. We're gonna have to start working on the damage now. Even if I strongly went way to do damage. But. Like, bias is interesting. I, I'm just running out of orb slash, is the only problem. I think we're okay with doing um, that kind of damage. Who cares about the buffer? Buffer was not necessary. I can take damage here. I, I, I take. I should play as much cards as possible here because I take no damage on this turn. But I should probably set up frost for the next turn, huh? Try to get go for the eyes, get rid of an artifact. Yeah. So we should have enough cards all to be, uh, Interesting run. I fucked up with the book of stabbing. That doesn't count, unfortunately. But it was fun. Definitely fun. And open hands. Is, I mean, okay, this is this was a genuine three energy deck. This was the this was an intruder empty cage. So this was genuinely three energy. But open hand obviously is insane.